Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And in this video, we're going to look at the Minimax test for a simple versus simple hypothesis. Let's let x1 through xn be distributed with some density, or PMF, and let the parameter theta live in the uh, parameter space omega, and it has two points in the parameter space, omega 0, let me rephrase that, theta 0 and theta 1, with prior probabilities P0 and P1, so there's the probability distribution on omega, they add to 1, there's only two points, and we wish to test is omega is theta equal to theta 0 versus the alternative hypothesis is theta equal to theta 1. Let's let delta be a decision function. Now this is the same as the test function in a frequentist paradigm. And so we've in previous videos we've called it phi of theta, but since now we're in the sort of a Bayesian or Minimax paradigm, we're calling it delta, and it's a decision function instead of a test function. But it's really the same concept. So delta is equal to 1 if, if our data lives in this critical region, means we accept the alternative. 0 if our data lives in the complement of C, means we accept H0, H0. Now C is a critical region. And our sample space is, is split into C and C complement. So the union of those makes the entire sample space. The C and C complement, of course, are disjoint. And for shorthand notation, we're going to let delta 0 represent that our decision function equals 0. And delta 1 represent our decision function equals 1. So note that delta is non-random in this example. And we're going to let L be a non-negative function and it's going to be what's called a loss function. Right? And our, this loss function will take on three values, 0, L1, and, and L0. Now the loss function is 0 if we make a correct decision. So the true state of nature is that theta is theta 0 and we indicate that it is. Or that theta is theta 1 and we indicate that it's theta 1. So we've made a correct decision and the loss is 0. We're going to let L0 be the loss if, if theta is theta 0 and we conclude that it should be theta 1. Now notice the subscript represents the true state of nature. So the true state of nature is theta is theta zero is you know theta is theta zero and we make a wrong decision right so this one represents that L1 is that theta one is the true state of nature but our decision function suggests that the other one's true now the risk of a function which we call capital R it and deals with theta and and delta it's the average loss we take the average loss of the loss function now it's discrete it only takes on three values and how do you take the mean of a discrete function is you take the value times the probability of observing that you know the value you know plus this value times the probability of observing plus this value times the probability of observing it but since this is zero we'll leave it out so here L1 times the probability of observing that plus L0, not L1, L1 times the probability of observing L1. Now, using conditional probability, this can be rewritten like this. Same here. Now, this we were calling P0, and this wrong decision, right? So the true state of nature is theta is theta 0, but we're indicating that it is not that we our decision function is, is saying that it should be theta one so we, that's the probability of an error which we'll call alpha now in the frequentist paradigm they'll call that a type one error the probability of a type one error um, here so l1 this is p1 the prior probability of theta one and this is the probability of 
of an air also. In frequentist paradigm, they call it a type 2 air. So that's beta is the probability of, you know, a, essentially a type 2 air. So a minimax decision function is one that minimizes the maximum risk over all decision functions. So delta of x, so this is our data, right, is a minimax decision function if the maximum Oh, this should be R of theta. Oh my gosh. So this is the maximum over theta of the average loss. Is less than or equal to the maximum over all theta of the risk associated with any other decision function. Okay, for all decisions. So the decision function uh, is the the minimum of the maximums of these risks, and that'll make more sense. We'll do an example, um, I think next video. But let's first prove something here. Now notice here's something that it's we take the risk function and it's maximized over all possible theta values. So our diffusion function is fixed. And then we let theta range in you know over all possible values, and then we look at the maximum, and then we do that for every other test function, and then the minimum of all those maximums is called a minimax decision function. So here, theorem is under the conditions on page one. So everything we've laid out. If the decision function is defined like this, so it's 1 or 0 if x lives in C, and it's 0 if x lives in the complement, and this is equivalent to the likelihood ratio some um, being greater than some constant k, or it's 0 if the likelihood ratio is less than that constant k. Now, k is determined such that it makes the risks equal. And remember, we're in a simple versus simple hypothesis testing. Now, then, the decision function is a minimax function. So let's prove that, and then that'll we'll call it quits for this video. So note that the risk when theta is theta zero is this theta uh, L one times alpha of one. And the risk here is L one times beta. Now let's let delta be another decision function with critical region D, right? So this test, the critical region is C. And the risk for this function when we plug in theta zero is L zero P zero. So the probability that X is in D and the risk, you know, the average risk when theta is theta one is L one, um, probability that X is in D complement. Now we're going to make two assumptions. First we're going to assume that the risk of this decision function is less than the risk of this decision function when we plug in theta zero. Now notice that this risk of this is here and the risk of this one is here. All right? So then if we divide both sides by L zero then we get the probability of our data being in D is less than or equal to the probability of our data being in C. Now this is under the assumption that theta is theta zero. This piece here is alpha. Now by the name and Pearson limit, the, our decision function delta is a most powerful test of size alpha. Then that means the power of delta is always greater than or equal to the power of delta star. That's what this means. So it's a probability we reject given that theta is theta 1. Probability we reject given theta is theta 1. Now, if we subtract this to this side and subtract this to this side and add 1s to both sides, then we get the probability that we do, you know, the probability that our test function is 0. 
So that says that this probability, notice that x is in d and x is in d complement, is greater than the probability that x is in c complement. But if we were to, to multiply both sides by L1, that implies the risk for, for the risk of theta 1 given delta star is greater than or equal to the risk of theta 1 given delta. So thus, the maximum of these two risks. Oh, notice that I'm not saying the maximum overall theta. Right? Why is that? Well, the reason is theta can only take on two values. So I just put both of them here, you know, you know, given delta, here's all the risks. So we don't have to, you know, it's the same of saying maximize overall theta, possible theta values. So only two. And under the assumptions, they're equal. So let's, I mean, the maximum is one of those. So let's just pick one. But we just showed that that is the, this risk is greater than the risk of the, uh, you know, of theta 1 delta star, and this is equal to the maximum of this. So, we've just shown that, that if this assumption is true, then delta is a minimax decision function. Now, I put double slashes, and that means we've, we've finished proving a little piece of the overall proof. So, now let's assume the opposite. So, right here, we assume that delta, the risk of delta star is less than delta. Let's go the other way. Let's assume the risk of delta star is greater than the risk of delta. And those are the only two possible things we can assume. So then the maximum of our risk you know, with, with delta over all possible theta, which is only theta 0 and theta 1, and since those are equal, we can just pick one. So let's pick this one. But by assumption, we have said that the risk associated with delta star is greater than it, and the risk of this is less than or equal to this risk, right? So if the maximum of these two risks is, is this one, then of course it's equal, but if the maximum risk is this one, then this is of course less than or equal to that. So it's true. And then we've proved that delta is a minimax operator, right? So thus, delta in all cases is a minimax decision function. And the square box means we've finished the proof. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. The next few videos are going to look at simple versus simple hypotheses. We're going to derive the, the Bayes decision function, the minimax function, the Neyman Pearson test, and compare them all. And I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.